This is a classic type of problem to show up in engineering physics class. This is one of the more simple examples of it. We have two masses connected to each other by an inextensible string, massless to make things simple. That would be riding over pulleys. And we're asked to find the acceleration of the system. This is a good introduction to this kind of problem. This is a Newton's second law problem. We don't have a static case. We have two objects here, which makes things kind of interesting, but there's nothing that uh, we can't handle. So we're saying that one mass is 20 kilograms, one mass is 30 kilograms. We can begin by setting up a free body diagram. Quite simple in this case. We have free body diagrams for each object. What we have is their weights pulling downward and then a force of tension pulling up. I'm going to maintain that the tension is going to be equal in both cases. We can claim that in this case because the forces are ideal, frictionless, massless, things like that. If we added in some other constraints like putting friction in the pulleys or masses in the pulleys so that they're inertial, then we wouldn't be able to say that the tensions are the same and then we'd need more information or more equations to solve the problem. Here I've set up expressions for the net forces on the objects we've got on weight one and on weight two. So weight one was the 20 kilogram mass, weight two was the 30 kilogram mass. Here I've set it up so that the forces as written are in different directions. Here the net force on one is going to be in the upward direction. So that'll be force of tension minus the force of weight if we're saying that up is positive. For the 30 kilogram mass I've said that down is positive and so then the net force will be the weight two minus tension since we know that the weights are mg. That's just going to be m1g and m2g. From the net force we can find the accelerations the acceleration of object 1 is going to be its net force divided its mass. The acceleration of object 2 is going to be its net force divided by its mass. And so in the case of A1, we've got the tension over M1 minus G, because the M's cancel in Mg. And then acceleration of 2, that's going to be G minus tension over the mass. And G because the mass cancels in Mg over M. Again, note that we've set it up so the acceleration is listed this way for positive and this way for positive. We don't have to do it that way, that just makes things simple. If we wanted to say that positive is up in both cases, then we'd note that the acceleration of the two objects would be in opposite directions, which in fact is true. The way I've set it up, I'm claiming that the constraint on our system, an additional equation that we have to work with, is that A1 equals A2, the acceleration of object 1 is the same as the acceleration of object 2 because they're connected by this inextensible string. If we were saying that for both objects, up was positive or up was negative, something like that, then we would say that their acceleration is in opposite directions. We'd say a1 equals minus a2, and then our next equation would be exactly the same when we plug them in. So what I've done here is I've plugged in a1, that's the tension over m1 minus g, and then the acceleration of a2, that's g minus the tension over m2, are the same thing. So this is set up, the a's disappeared, a is our unknown that we want to find out. This is going to find the tension in the string, and from the tension in the string we can plug that back into the acceleration expressions to find what they are. So in a sense, unless you're asked for it, the tension in this string is a so-called nuisance parameter. We need to find it on the way to getting what we're actually looking for. But then again, the problem might ask you what the tension is. So it's good to find it out anyway, and it's certainly not going to hurt us to find it out. Just running through some algebra, what I've done here is multiplied both sides by m1, m2 to get rid of all the fractions. So t times m2, minus g times m1 m2 equals g times m1 m2 minus m1 times t. Now I'm going to gather both the t terms onto one side, m1 t plus m2 t on the left hand side, and then m1 m2 g minus minus m1 m2 g, it gives us 2 m1 m2 g on the right hand side. So the tension times m1 plus m2 equals 2 m1 m2 g. Solve for tension by dividing both sides by m1 plus m2, what do we get? We get 2g times m1 m2 over m1 plus m2. This is the way I often like to set up these situations. We can see right at a glance that the units are going to work out because we have tension that should be a force equals 2 times g, that's an acceleration, equals what's this? m1 m2 over m1 plus m2. That's a mass squared divided by a mass. Well that's going to give us units of mass. Units of mass times units of acceleration give us units of force, which is exactly what we want. Next, we plug this value for tension into our expressions for the acceleration. First thing we'll do is we'll get us formula for the acceleration. And second, if we plug that 
tension into those two formulas, we can check that they give the same answer. If they do, that'll be some evidence that perhaps we've done the algebra right. So for A1, that just scrolled off, but um, what it was was T over M1 minus G. A2 was G minus T over M2. Let's see what we get. So we're going to plug in this value, 2G M1 M2 over M1 plus M2 for T divided by M1. Well, that takes away the M1 in the numerator. What we've done here is plug the same thing in for T here, except now when we divide by M2, that takes away the M2 in the numerator. Looking at the first line for the acceleration of object 1, so there's a factor of G in both terms, and so we'll make it so that we can actually add them together. So we're going to multiply this G by M1 plus M2. G times 2M2 from the first term, minus M1 minus M2 from the second term. So the M2 minus M2 just gives us M2. Um, we still have minus M1, so our result is G times M2 minus M1 over M1 plus M2. For the acceleration of object 2, we have the same kind of thing, except that we're going to, again, multiply the G term by M1 plus M2 over M1 plus M2 so that we can add the fraction, and we get G times M1 plus M2 minus 2 M1 in the numerator. M1 minus 2 M1 gives us minus M1, so we have M2 minus M1 over M1 plus M2 times G for the acceleration. Quite informally, we can verify that this makes sense. What this is saying is the acceleration of the whole system, the masses together, is equal to the net external force on them, which is G times M2 down minus G times M1. And this shows us the net force divided by the total mass of the system, which kind of makes sense, even though it's not strictly the right way to address the problem. Now to get the actual answer, all we have to do is plug our numbers in. The acceleration here directly is g, 9.8 meters per second squared, times m2 minus m1, which is 10 kilograms, divided by their sum, which is 50 kilograms. That gives us this number. The tension, if we want to find it, we can get back from this expression here. 2g, that's going to be 19.6 meters per second squared, times 600 kilograms, that's m1, m2, divided by the sum, which is 50 kilograms, and that gives us 235.2 newtons.